joining our closing bell exchange today uh, to discuss all of this. Oliver Persia from Brudeman Brothers, Dan Suzuki from Richard Bernstein Advisors, and Rick Santelli at the CME in Chicago. Good afternoon uh, to you all. Uh, Oliver, if, if I start with you, is it kind of encouraging to see the markets picking up again when we've had all this negative trade news over the last week or so? Yeah, I think it's encouraging and I think it's all about sentiment. So consumer sentiment continues, continues to be at an all-time high. Business sentiment is an all-time high. And as a result, markets are somewhat ignoring the downside risk of a potential trade war. At the end of the day, there's three plausible outcomes. There's things deteriorate and impact the uh, economic performance, which would be bad. Things kind of teeter along and nothing really happens and economic performance is strong enough to offset the impact of trade. Or reason you know, wins out and uh, economic performance is strong and the trade war ends. So two out of three scenarios are fairly positive for stocks and I think that's what the market is reflecting right now. Just going to mention that Tilray is suspended again. Uh, having started <laughs> trading uh, briefly, it is now uh, once again suspended, still up of course sharply today. Huge volatility in that number today. Uh, of course the CEO was on Mad Money last night, no doubt driving a lot of interest in the stock today uh, as indeed the uh, appearance on Closing Bell did uh, a couple of months ago. Dan, back to the trade discussions. Uh, uh, interesting point in your notes uh, to us that you say it's really encouraging that people are talking so much about it, meaning that it's all priced in already. Yeah, I think one thing that's been very uh, prevalent throughout this entire cycle is that whatever the worry du jour is, people are just laser focused on the downside risk. So they're very concerned that this we're going to return back to the 2008 type of scenario. I think that's ongoing. It's very pervasive. Uh, I think that when it comes to trade, you know, everybody's very focused on what the downside impact of the tariffs are, and there's a real cost, uh, but there's very little focus on the positive offsets. And I think if you think about it from a, from a China perspective, you know, the, the actual number that you're talking about is less than half a percent of GDP, but that's the absolute number. If you actually factor in the fact that the yuan has devalued its currency by eight or nine percent since the peak, you're really taking away, cutting a big chunk of that negative impact uh, on the economy. The other part of it is we're really talking about 20 percent. Uh, of the Chinese export market. The other 80-some percent is, is not impacted by tariffs and Chinese currency is divided relative to the other 80 percent as well. And the other elephant in the room is that China has just started to unleash a massive amount of stimulus, which has legs, but is actually likely to start to impact the economy. So I, I think I'm not just, I don't want to be dismissive of the negative impacts of the tariffs, but I think that people are forgetting that there are positive offsets. Yeah, and Rick Santelli, in addition to the latest in, in terms of trade headlines, we've got our eyes on the Fed. You got the 10-year yield back above 3 percent today, a Fed decision next week. Uh, how closely are you watching that? You know, to me, the Fed should be a, a positive force. The Fed needs to follow the economy, the strength in the economy. It needs to follow the strength in the jobs market. It needs to follow the strength in the stock indices. And it needs to raise rates. The issue is, will Jay Powell and company know that magic point to slow down or stop? And nobody knows the answer to that. But I would say this, that we've had 50 basis points of tightening for 2018, 25 more on the way. We're up 66 basis points on 10s for the year and 48 basis points for 30s. I think that really puts a better face on it. Obviously, we've had curve flattening. Obviously, the maturities are going to try to make room to fit in the quarter point tightening coming and maybe the one in December. And how exactly the yield curve moves to allow the Fed to insert those increases should be something Jay Powell and company pay very close attention to.